right, guys. You know, it's great to be here. I'm so excited to be going against Paul Hogan in a leather jacket and Katy Perry hot and cold looking ass over there. Look, people are starting to think that I'm going to lose this match. People are starting to gain steam in the polls that are not me. And that's just so cute. Everyone wants to believe in the little engine that could until it can't. Check your clocks. It's fucking prime time. Let's get down to business. Wow. So this is quite a surprise. I uh, I didn't actually think I'd be in a uh, number one contender match after only uh, one win. That's uh, it's kind of crazy. But, you know, this match is kind of... Uh, this may be the most uh, biggest challenge for me in the uh, in ev- any match that I've ever competed in because I'm going against two competitors who I know quite well. One of them is a, a good friend. Uh, it's just isn't insane that his knowledge is is one of the greats and I uh, am very scared of that person and then the other person I have a personal vendetta against if you remember in the team league uh, semi-finals I believe all it came down to is that five pointer truth about motherfucking Charlie and uh, I have uh, revenge that I need to settle with this uh, individual so uh, at the end of the day the only person that really matters to me is Jeremy because at the end it'll be me versus him and I'll be happy to represent myself and the Australian continent. All right, so uh, yeah, that was a lot of smack talk, I guess. Um, I'm not here for that. I'm here, I made it, um, facing two great competitors. I'm just ready to play the game. Let's go. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another exciting episode of Worldwide Movie Trivia. I am your host for tonight, Big Pop himself here, Jeff Varyu, and joining me in the co-hosting chair, this is an interesting co-host today, considering <sighs> the circumstances we have going into this match today. Not only is he our head question writer, not only is he the leader of Atomic Nation, but he is the current number one ranked competitor and current champion, ladies and gentlemen, Jeremy the Adam Adams. Jeremy. What are you doing here? Is, is Case tied up in a closet somewhere? Did you infiltrate the co-hosting chair just so you can get into this match today? I don't know about all that. I just think I'm a glutton for punishment because I'm so nervous right now. I, I feel like my fate's being decided tonight because we have three awesome competitors and they are vying for the number one contender shot against me. So we're going to see three awesome competitors probably play awesomely, and then I'm going to have to face one of these guys. So I don't even know why I'm here subjecting myself to this, honestly. But you know what? This is this is exciting stuff. Well, it's like you said, you might be a glutton for punishment, but we're going to find out that because we've got three competitors in this ring because this is our triple threat number one contenders match. This is whoever wins this match will go on to face Jeremy for the title shot. And based off these three competitors, any one of them could easily sit in that chair next to you, Jeremy. It is, I mean, you got, you got Paul Oyama, primetime Paul Oyama, one half of the current team champions big picture in the ring. You got Thomas the Truth Deans, one half of Omega Club. I'd say he just had a phenomenal win in his triple threat match. And then you got the maestro Jake Marangoni, who had his amazing triple threat match. I mean, these are three amazing competitors today who all could easily be facing off against you. I know I'm excited for this match. Jeremy, knowing that you have three here, <laughs> is there any particular one you want to see in the ring in the end? I really think I should say no comment. I mean, this is getting weird as it as it is me being here hosting, but all I can say is I already have the utmost respect for all these guys and any one of them it'll be an honor to face off against, and I'm just... I'm nervous, and uh, whoever whoever wins today is really going to earn it, and uh, this, it's it's just exciting, exciting times. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I think these guys are chomping at the bit to get at each other, so without further ado, let's introduce these competitors right now. So first up in the ring, we got primetime Paul Oyama. He is currently 1-0, representing the Wild Bunch. His strengths include Miyazaki and not knowing how to change his clock because he seems to be always stuck in one particular time. Maybe prime time. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> Up next, our second opponent tonight, we have the maestro, Jake Marangoni. He is currently 1-0 as well, and currently a free agent right now. And his strengths include Steven Soderbergh and conducting an orchestra. With a name like the maestro, you would think he'd be at least decent at doing something like that. Yeah. 
And then our third and final competitor for tonight, we have Thomas the Truth Eans. He is currently 1-0, representing Atomic Nation. His strengths include Nightmare on Elm Street and not knowing Ed Harris films. I'm shipping him a DVD of Alamo Bay as we speak. And I will give him a copy of Enemy at the Gates as we speak. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now that we got all our competitors in the ring, let's get jumping right into this match into round one. Jeremy, you want to explain to these fine folks how round one works? Absolutely, guys. Round one works as such. Every competitor gets eight questions from eight different categories. For each question, they have 15 seconds to write the answer. After the time is done, they will all show and say their answer. A correct answer is worth one point. If someone gets all eight correct, they get a bonus question. And during the match, uh, each competitor gets a total of three repeats unless there is a specified connection issue. All right, love that. And then just a reminder to our competitors, just make sure to keep your hands on screen at all times. Just a little housekeeping rule for us. Without further ado, Mr. Primetime Paul Oyama, are you ready? The maestro Jake Marangoni, are you ready? Make it so. And Thomas the Truth Eans, are you ready? Let's do it. Good luck to you tonight, gentlemen. Let's see who is going to be our number one contender after this match. Jeremy, you want to hit him with the first question? All right, guys. Your first question, pretty much as always, is in the category of animation. What film was directed by Don Bluth and featured the voice talents of Hank Azaria and Christopher Lloyd? That's a nice cut. This is a nice cut of, a choice, of an answer right here. Yeah. I, say, I respect Don Bluth much. Coming from an animator's perspective, Don Bluth is one of the kings of animation to me. If you're old like me and grew up in the 80s, he, he has a special place in your heart. I wasn't necessarily around in the 80s, but I was around the 90s, so I was there for some of his good gems there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's give him a five, four, three, two, and one. Paul, what you got? Anastasia uh, is correct. I was like, we can't quite hear you. Yeah, not hearing you at the second. Oh, I was muted. My bad. Anastasia. You're, sorry about you're that. Good. Well, so we saw it written down. You're good. Jake, Wait, what saw. you got? All right. Anastasia. Correct. The board, correct. And Thomas, can you make it perfect? Didn't have it. Oh, darn. All right, gentlemen. All right. Your next question is going to come to you in the category of drama. In One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, R.P. McMurphy had been convicted of what crime before being transferred to a mental institution? We'll accept a couple different answers. Yeah. Uh, so there's there's one specific answer, but we'll be slightly lenient. Yeah, so, so uh, depend, yeah. depending on what you choose, we will be yeah. leniency. What a great movie, by the oh, way. I love, <laughs> love this movie so much. Oh, yeah. And the book is great, too. Mm-hmm. R.I.P. Milos Forman. Mm -hmm. R.I.P. Give him a five, four, three, two, and one. Markers down. Let's go with Jake on this one. What you got? 50-50. Um, Is it right? We, we will accept, accept that. Rape. Yeah. Thomas, what you got? Murder. Ooh, sorry, sorry, no. And Paul? I have statutory rape. That's that is exactly, the exact answer. The exact answer. But really under the legal system... Statutory rape is still rape, so we will accept that. Yes. All right, guys, your next category is sci-fi fantasy. Which film in the Alien franchise features the characters Charlie Holloway, Meredith Vickers, and Peter Wayland? I know I can talk to you, Jeremy, about the Alien franchise, because every time Case is on screen and we talk Alien, he makes me sad. Because I know. He just, he just hates... He hates Alien. He likes Aliens. I I, aliens. I love Aliens, so I'm with you. Yeah. I still I still prefer Aliens, but you know I love them both. What? We're both cut. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. All right. <laughs> Let's give him a five, four, three, two, and one. Markers down. Let's go with Thomas on this one. Is that uh, Alien vs Predator? No, Ooh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry correct. Let's go with Paul. Prometheus. That is correct. Prometheus is correct, and Jake. Prometheus. Yeah. All, right. All right. I believe Jake and, and Thomas, uh, Jake and uh, Paul still perfect. They are still perfect right now. Yeah. We still got a lot more questions to go, because our next question is going to come to you in the category of horror and thriller. What horror remake 
stars Liv Schreiber and Julia Stiles. Love the original. Love the original, yes. <laughs> I remember when this was coming out, and there was a certain hype around it mm. without giving too much away. Yeah. I remember the hype was better than the film. Yeah. We'll just go with that. All right, let's give them five, four, three, two, one. Markers down. Let's go back to Paul. I have the Omen. That is correct. correct. Uh, Jake, what do you got? I got a Ryan Sydney Millie Bill Horror. Good guess. Ryan Thomas. Reynolds. You got it? Yeah. The Omen. That Very is correct. Very good. He's on the board. Yes. On the board. I remember it came out right. June 6th of 2006. So 6 6 Yeah. Yep, 76. That's true. <laughs> All right, guys, your next category is comic book movies. In the climax of Deadpool, which character accidentally destroy destroys the equipment stabilizing a helicarrier? Uh, I can't talk. A helicarrier causing it to crash. I'll say that one more time. In the climax of Deadpool, which character accidentally destroys the equipment stabilizing a helicarrier causing it to crash? Whew, you write the questions. You think you could read them? Take two. <laughs> Always better than take one. <laughs> I'm assuming you probably like this movie, Jeff. <laughs> Being that Deadpool is one of my favorite here or comic book characters, yeah, I think this one's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still haven't seen the second one yet, though. Oh, I haven't either. Damn those kids! Yeah, I'm missing going to the theater. <laughs> In Not missing five, two. Four, three, two, and one. Markers down. Let's go with Jake on this one. Nick on a teenage warhead. Very good. You got that is it. correct. Thomas, you got it? Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Very good. Correct. And Paul, can you make it a clean Played by Brianna Hildebrand, Negasonic Teenage Warhead. And he's still perfect, ladies and gentlemen. Five for five. Let's see if he continues on right now in the category of classics. In 1956's Invasion of the Body Snatchers, it takes place in which U.S. state? Let me re read that question again. I had a Germany moment right there. <laughs> 1956's Invasion of the Body Snatchers takes place in which U.S. state? You don't know. Guess the state. That's exactly what I'm doing. I was saying, even though we have, I was saying, we have a former... Love these geography or... questions, especially about America. Especially <laughs> I will say Americans have a little bit of an edge. I will say, but if it was Australia, obvious questions... bias isn't going on. <laughs> sorry, I'm over... sorry, buddy. Uh, it's <laughs> it it's in a movie. On... It happens, unfortunately, in these games. In five, four, three, two, one. Thomas, what you got? I went with Kelly. Good. That guess. is correct. You got it. Paul, did you get it? We've been on the run, driving in the sun, looking out for number one. I love it. And Jake? Washington, D.C. Oh. Not that's quite a state, though, that's... unfortunately. All right, guys. Your, your next category is one that's bit me a few times. Romantic comedy. Sarah Mellis, Allegra Cole, and Albert Brenneman are characters in which movie? Sarah Milos. I'm oh, sorry. Mil Sarah, Sarah Milos, Milos yes. Allegra Cole, and Albert Brenneman are characters in what movie? This is a movie I completely forgot I saw in the theaters. I actually saw it on a date. <laughs> <laughs> it's a romantic comedy. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> I remember seeing this uh, with my girlfriend at the time. <laughs> ah, middle school. <laughs> yeah. I was already like 38 by then, so. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't come out in the 80s. <laughs> in five, four, three, <sighs> two, one. Thomas, what you got? Hitch. That you is correct. It. Very good. Paul, did you get it? Hitch. Oh, All right. Fake out. He always looks fake out. And Jake. Chasing Liberty. Oh. oh what boy. a guess. <laughs> All right. We are going into our eighth question. Paul, you get this right. You have the opportunity to go for a bonus question. Yep. But we got to get through this question first because your next question is the category of war. The film We Were Soldiers depicts which war? Short and sweet. Short and sweet to the point. Yeah. One that doesn't get talked about near enough when you think of I think, films. I think a lot of this guy's stuff has kind of been forgotten for 
certain reasons, but if you go back, there's some good movies there. Yeah, I mean, the man <laughs> and what he does is... Yeah, different than the name of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> but when you look at the craft, I mean, you can't deny the craft. Yeah. Let's go in five, four, three, two, one. Let's go with Paul on this one, see if he gets it. I said Nam. He that is eight. Perfect. Eight perfect eight. round. Jake, did you get it? I'm not having a good day, I reckon. Well. No. Oh, and Thomas, did you get it? Yeah, I didn't have it. Ooh, okay. Well, oh, okay. This is interesting. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so one more question. It only goes to Paul to get his nine points on the board here. Don't write bonus. this down, right? Uh, you can just go ahead and say you it. You can yeah. say it. Okay. Board, yeah. yeah, all right. Paul, your bonus question, mixed bag question. In what comedy does Hugh Jackman play a man with testicles dangling from his chin? Is that movie 43? For nine, nine points. Nine for nine. Woo-hoo-hoo. Oh, God, end, that question. At the, at the end of round one, we have Paul up nine points. This is the first I think we've ever had so far with somebody answering perfect round I one. believe in singles it is, yes. Yep. But Jake and Thomas are not far behind with four points apiece. So yeah. this game, we still got a lot of game to go yet. Yeah. All right, everybody, so we're going into round two now. And look who's joining us right now on screen. It is the Grand Adderall himself, Case Cornelius. Uh, Case is going to tell us how round two is going to work because round two is a mouthful in triple threats. Case, uh, take it away. Boy, it is. I'm a little under the weather, so apologies for any cuffing or uh, just my voice being fucked up. But <laughs> round two in triple threats uh, is, a, is a thing. Paul is in the lead, so he will decide to go first, second, or third. Then... Uh, Thomas is technically the uh, favorite player between uh, Jake and Thomas because they're uh, tied. So Thomas will then decide to go next after Paul, uh, and Jake has no decision, unfortunately, for him. Uh, after those decisions are made, then the person going first will bet on either red, white, or black. Uh, and the second person bets on the other color, the last will have no decision in this. Then uh, the person going first will choose between. Oh, will spin the wheel! We have a wheel! That's why I'm Woo! here! <laughs> hey. We got it! We have it, indeed. And um, we'll spin the wheel, and of course, uh, it will land on the category. The person uh, can choose to stick with that category, or hand, uh, or go again. Uh, however, uh, unless they, uh, of course, spin a color. If they spin a color, then uh, the person with that color can choose a category for themselves. If they had already answered questions from a category, though, they will choose it for uh, their opponent. Uh, and of course, if you spin again, then you have to stick with the second category that you uh, are stuck with. From a category, they've got four questions worth two points apiece. Uh, however, if you don't know it based on the question alone, you can uh, go for multiple choice, knocking it down to one point. And of course, there is stealing. Uh, and that works, of course, that uh, the two people who are uh, waiting for uh, someone to miss you write it down on your whiteboard and if the person misses then you show it your, uh, show it on screen um, and of course you can't go multiple choice if the player uh, playing didn't go for multiple choice anyway Paul uh, you're in the lead would you like to go first second or last I'm gonna defer it is gonna defer to Thomas Thomas would you go uh, like to go first or would you like Jake to go first like Jake to go first. Jake, you're gonna go first. Uh, uh, bet Jake on... does not want to go first. <laughs> first. Well, <laughs> all right, he, he forfeits matter. the match. Good. All right, Thomas, let's do this. <laughs> Jake, uh, bet on either red, black, or white. Uh, I'm gonna go with white. He's gonna go with white. Interesting choice. So, uh, Thomas, red or black? I'll go black. He'll go black. I'll pick things. red. <laughs> Maybe. Was, Good said, choice. Good I choice. I about pink, but... There is no pink. All right, so I'm going to spin the wheel then first for Jake. So let's see what happens. What it lands on. It lands on... Movies with dead in the title. So close to black. Would you like to uh, stick with that or go for something else? Let's spin again. Go big or go home. Go like spin again. So we're gonna spin the wheel again, and whatever you get, this is it. It lands on 
new releases. All right. All right. Let's do this, Thomas. Jerem, Jerem if you want to read him his questions and new Got releases. Him. All right, Jake, you have four questions in the category of new or recent releases. First question. What recent sci-fi action movie co-stars Jeffrey Dean Morgan, Joe Manganiello, and Marley Shelton? Rampage. That is correct for two points. Very good. Second question. In what recent film does Joaquin Phoenix play a war veteran who tracks down missing girls for a living? Uh, oh god. Oh god, what is it? Oh. <laughs> Give you five, four. All right, multiple choice, actually. All right. Is it A, don't worry, he won't get far on foot? B, you were never really here? You were never really here. Uh, that is correct for one point. I didn't have to finish the rest. <laughs> I did right. a bad I the title, but yeah, I just need multiple choice. <laughs> yeah. That is a tricky title. All right, your third question. What was the name of the hurricane in the hurricane heist? Uh, multiple choice. All right, is it A, Adam, B, Arthur, C, Alexander, or D, Andrew? B. I'm sorry? B. B as in boy? Yeah. That is incorrect. Paul, like, we give them Paul five and seconds. Thomas, quick five count. Can five. The, yeah. Can I rehear the options? Yeah. Okay. Yes. It's, is it, It's free for the yeah. options, yes. All right. Is it A, Adam, B, Arthur, C, Alexander, or D, Andrew? Five, four, three, two, and one. Paul, what you got? I have Alexander. That is incorrect. Thomas. Oh. Andrew. That is correct. Indeed, Thomas oh. gets the steal. All right, your last question, Jake. What is Brendan Gleeson's character's first name in Paddington 2? <laughs> Wish that got a release in Australia. Um, multiple cool. choice. All right, is it A, Knuckles, B, Bruiser, C, Brick, or D, Rock? <laughs> um, repeat the choices, please. Okay, is it A, Knuckles, B, Bruiser, C, Brick, or D, Rock? What's the Brick? That's incorrect. Five oh, seconds huh. for the other guys. Four, three, two, one. Thomas, what you got? I want D. No, sorry. That's incorrect, and Paul? Knuckles makes the best marmalade. That is correct. That's One point cool. steal for Paul. All right, so out of that, Jake now brings his score up to seven. Thomas is at five, and Paul is currently at ten. So it's still close. We still got a close game. Thomas is up next, and I'm going to spin the wheel here for him. Let's see what it lands on. Category of... Oh, my God. Red? It's between Red and Scary Kiss movies. It's exactly on the line. I can't make a difference. Does the, the thing not tell you which one it is? No. Uh, wait. Like I think you have to spin again. Spin it again. Yeah. Spin it again. Just out of fairness. I think it's Scary okay. Kiss yeah. movies, but okay. Mm. Me too. Okay, we're gonna so spin it's... it again just out of fairness. Yeah. All right. As spin much it as I love it to be Red. <laughs> <laughs> Category Ooh. is Steven Ooh. Soderbergh. Uh, would you like to stick with that? Or go for something else. I'm gonna take movies with dead in the title. <laughs> <laughs> in the old rules, he could have done that. Uh, I can't do that. No. no. <laughs> what? It's oh. just it's a wheel now. You just have to spin again. Oh, yeah. You just have to go again. So, do you like to stick with Soderbergh or go again? <laughs> uh, let's go again. All yeah. right. So whatever it is wow. now, you're stuck with. Jake, Jake devastated over there. Yeah. Yeah. Category of Ryan Gosling movies. Mmm, interesting. 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 I, 
I will, I, I will take the questions for Ryan Gosling. So let me just bring those up real, real quick. All right, Thomas. Your first question for you in the category of Ryan Gosling. What is the first name of Gosling's character in La La Land? Oh, oh my god. You're gonna need a multiple choice. Right, your options are A, Josh, B, Sebastian, C, Julian, or D, Steven. Sebastian? For one point. Got it. Alright, second question. In what movie does Gosling play a womanizer called Jacob? Who helps Cal with dating after a divorce? Crazy stupid love. Two points. Nicely done. Third question. What is Ryan Gosling's occupation in the place beyond the pines? Um. I don't know technical term. I mean, he's a daredevil, like performer. Uh, okay, yeah. we will accept that. Yes, yeah. so oh, we will I'll accept that. I'll say we will take that for a, a two yeah. point. Just Technic technically, a motorcycle stunt. Yes, like a motorcycle stunt, but yeah, daredevil. Okay, daredevil is another word for it. We'll take it. Yeah. yeah. And then your last question in Ryan Gosling. What is the date in Blade Runner 2049 that's engraved into the tree and the wooden horse <laughs> that Kay has? Wow. Multiple choice. All right, your <clears throat> options are A, 21, 12, 23, B, 26, 0, 1, 22, C, 0, 6, 10, 21, or D, 14, 0, 5, 2, 0. Man, I might have to, like, write those down. Uh, oh. Can I do that with a repeat? Repeat? Do you want the whole question, or do you want just the, an the answers? Multiple choices. Okay, okay. Yeah. Alright, so your options are A, 21, 12, 23, B, 26, 0, 1, 22, C, 0, 6, 10, 21, or D, 14, 0, 5, 20. As I understand, yeah, a lot of numbers. Getting yeah. <laughs> Sounds like we're in math class. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um. Five, four, three, two, one. D. That's incorrect. Right. Paul and Jake, quick five count. Five. Four, I think we got it. Three. Yeah. Two. <clears throat> one. All right, Paul. What do you got? Zero six ten twenty one. That is correct. That is correct. One point and Jake. Just put A. Um, Ooh, Officer K dash. Damn, I second guess myself. All right, so Thomas did pretty good with Ryan Gosling. Yeah, Problem got a couple deep pulls there. I would say he's within one point of Paul. Paul got a steal off of that one, but you know Thomas is at ten, Paul's at eleven. Jake's still sitting good at seven now. I mean, so again, still close. Which brings us now to Big Bad Paul. It's his turn now. Let's see how he does mm. with the wheel. Here's the spin. The spin is in. Nightmare Ooh, Open Street. We're spinning again. We're spinning, <laughs> He's spinning again. again. That I'm makes not sense. Go for it. Go so, for it. Thomas and Bellwood are both sad. I'm actually not awful at Elm Street, but I'm spinning again. So, right, I'm not, so whatever, I, whatever it is now, yes, trans versus. If, you, if you're not going to go shut up uh, Thomas, then you have nothing to say. <laughs> And you'll get the wow. category of black, which means, Thomas, you can choose the strength. Elm Street. <laughs> oh, that was oh Elm Street okay. Anyway. Gave it back to him. All right. This is well, interesting. I will get these questions then in Nightmare on Elm Street. All right, guys. All right, Paul, your first question of four in the category of Nightmare on Elm Street. In... Nightmare on Elm Street, The Dream Master. What is Debbie doing right before Freddy appears and transforms her into a cockroach?
Uh, multiple choice. All right. Is it A, eating breakfast, B, lifting weights, C, watching TV, or D, having sex? I'm going to go having breakfast. That is incorrect. Five seconds, guys. Five. I think Thomas we'll already has it. Change my uh, answer. <laughs> Two and one. Let's go with Thomas, see if he gets it. Um, I had bench press, but lifting weight. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll accept we'll yeah, either, yeah. either one. Mm. I had working out first, but then I put lifting weights. That is correct. Well. All right. Your second question, Paul. What is the profession of Heather's husband, Chase, in Wes Craven's New Nightmare? Oh. Okay, one I've actually seen. That's a good start. Let's see both hands on screen there. Oh, my bad. Sorry, yeah. sorry. No, no it's fine. That's it. First yeah. One. Just in case. Multiple choice. All right. Is it A, movie director, B, movie actor, C, visual effects artist, or D, movie producer? I think he's a producer. That is incorrect. Correct. Five Four, seconds. Four, three, two, one. Markers down. Jake, what you got? Director? No, nope. sorry. Thomas. Uh, visual effects. The effects. That is he correct. Got it. Uh, he got the lead with that now. Currently up one point. All right, Paul, your third question. Who was the second actress to portray the character Kristen Parker? I think Thomas was writing before he even heard the name of the character. I don't know how he does that. <laughs> so was I. I was like, Jake's got it, though, too, it looks like. Oh, okay, okay. What does Paul have it? That's the question. Multiple choice. Is it A, Patricia Arquette, B, Lisa Wilcox, C, Brooke Bundy, or D, Tuesday Night? Lisa Wilcox. That is incorrect. Correct. Five. Wow. Four. The three, Russians cut. Two. One. Thomas, what you got? Tuesday night. That is correct. Oh. Tuesday it. night. Yeah, yep. All right. Last question here. Whoa, this is painful. All right. What is the street address of the Elm Street house where Nancy and other characters live throughout the series? Do you want the number and the street, or just the... I mean, yeah. I think yeah. we kind of know what the street is. Yeah, yeah. Street. You can include that if you want. Yeah. Um. Choice. All right, is it A, 6201 Elm Street, B, 3679 Elm Street, C, 2204 Elm Street, or D, 1428 Elm Street? 1428. That is correct for one it. point. He got one. Got Paul, good with those numbers. All right. <laughs> Not so good with those moves. A little, little, little rocky <laughs> with it, but I'm sure Thomas had it there. But man, Tuesday night, I was in. Going into round three, we currently have our scores. Thomas is in the lead with 13. Paul's right behind him with 12. And Jake's knocking close on the door with nine. But this is still anybody's game. All right, Jeremy. So we are now going oh. into round three. This, this is, is still anybody's game. Whew. But we have the IMDB round to go through right now. Jeremy, want to explain to the fine folks at home how the round three works. All right, guys, all our competitors are going to get three questions based off IMDb information, and they have to name the movie. The one in the lead will pick their numbers, and the one be, uh, the one behind, the ones behind will go before. Uh, the first question is worth two points. They get the year, genres, and main actor and actress or actress. The second question is worth three points, and they get the year, plot, keywords, and director. And the last question is worth five points, and they get the year and can choose two of the four clues, actor, director, co-actor, or plot keywords. All right, and just a reminder to our competitors, you, you, all three of you have your three repeats left, which is very, very impressive for this late in the game. So with that being said, 
The current player in the lead, Thomas, you are currently in the lead right now by one point. Please choose either number one, two, or three. Two. Okay. Three, or four, five, or six. Four. All right. And seven, eight, or nine. Just seven. Okay. Paul, choose either. Three, five, and eight. Three, five, five and, eight. and eight. Leaving Jake with one, six, and nine. Yeah, those will be mine. I'll take those. Okay. So Jake, I say you will go first since you are technically since you are the first one behind. Jeremy, you want to read him his first questions, or do you want me to do it? I got it. Um, or okay. say I'm, again, it's it's movie number one. Movie number one. Okay. All right. Your two point question, Jake. The year is 1985. The genres are crime, drama, and romance, and your actor is Harrison Ford. Witness. For two For points. Two points. Bring it up now to eleven. All right, movie number three for him now is number six. All right, movie number six, Jake. Your year is 2011. Your plot keywords are mental illness, archery, and high school, and your director is Lynn Ramsey. We already had the Lynn Ramsey film. That would be We Need to Talk About Kevin. For three points. Three points. points. <laughs> Brings up to 14, so now we're going to go over to Paul. I say since he is behind now with 12, we are going to go to Paul now for your two-point question. You chose movie number three. Your year is 2016. Your genres are action, crime, and drama. And your actor, Chiwetel Ejiofor. Twenty sixteen? Mm-hmm. Twenty sixteen. I have to give you five. Four. Three. I'm gonna say triple two. nine? Two points. For two points. Brings it up to fourteen, ties it up. So now we're gonna go over to Thomas. You want me to take Thomas? Since yeah, you take it, Jeff. Right. Faction right. loyalties. Okay. No, I got you, I got you, I got you. <laughs> All right, Thomas, your two-point question, movie number two. Your year is 1993. Your genres are crime, drama, and mystery, and your actor, Julia Roberts. Gonna have to give you five. Four. I'm sorry. Sleeping with the enemy. Oh, I'm sorry. The answer we're looking for the Pelican Brief. Ah. Oh. You were close. You were really close. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna stick with you now on your three point question. Movie number four. Your year is 1989. Your plot keywords: high school, click, and murder. And your director, Michael Lehman. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Okay, that'll be your first repeat then. Your year is 1989. Your plot keywords, high school, click, and murder. And your director, Michael Lehman. Is that Heathers? Three, Three points! points. <laughs> that was Heathers. Okay. Great movie. This is interesting. Let's I'll say we could go to let's go to Paul because he didn't get to do his three pointer and but Jake did. So we're gonna go to Paul right now for your three point question. You have movie number five. Your year is nineteen ninety nine. Your plot keywords are high school, popsicle, and murder, and your director, Darren Stein. Wait, 
1999. Uh, can you repeat those? Yeah. Okay, that's your first repeat then. Again, your year is 1999. Your year, or yeah, your plot keywords are high school, popsicle, and murder, and your director is Darren Stein. Um. I think this is a uh, jawbreaker. Three points. He always does that. Oh draws out, gosh. draws out the gets, suspense. gets the lead right there. Currently, that was not on purpose. That was not so on purpose. Now, I, I, all right, we now get into some interesting waters. We are now on all of everybody's five pointers, and we got to go to Jake. Jake, you need to hit this in order to stay in this game. Yeah. All right. What what away. number did he have? I'm he sorry. Had number nine. All right, Jake. Your year is 1988. What two clues would you like from actor, director, co-actor, or plot keywords? Okay, plot keywords. Okay. And let's let's go actor. Again, your year is 1988. Your actor or actress, Catherine Hicks, and your plot keywords are mother, marketing, and bad boss. Repeat the question. The year is 1988. The actress is Catherine Hicks, and the keywords are mother, marketing, and bad boss. I just want to say everyone thought this was going to be a knockout for Paul, and I proved them wrong, but... <sighs> you know, I'm just going to go for it, and if I'm wrong, then that's okay. Nine to five. No, sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Plot keywords might have thrown you off a bit. We were looking for child's play. Oh. The Chucky doll movie. Yeah, Unfor I mean a little. Unfortunately, with that, Jake, you are eliminated at this point, I would say. But you played a phenomenal game, though. So no shame at all in that. Okay. We now shift our attention over to Thomas. You are behind one point. Your five point question. You have movie number seven. Your year is 2017. I need you to pick two of the following actor, director, co actor, or plot keywords. Actor and plot keywords. Okay. Again, your year is 2017. Your plot keywords children, Catholic nuns, an evil spirit, and your actor, Anthony Nepa Lapaglia. You have one remaining. Again, your year is 2017. Your actor, Anthony LaPaglia, and your plot keywords are children, Catholic nuns, and evil spirit. Last repeat then, again, your year is 2017, your actor is Anthony LaPaglia, and your plot keywords are children, Catholic nuns, and evil spirit. Gonna give you five. Four, three, two, one. Conjuring two, but that was not it. And your winner and your number one contender going on to face Jeremy the Adam Adams in a title match. Prime time, Paul Oyama. Right universe, right universe. We're Annabelle looking for Annabelle, 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 Annabel
Oh, poor Jake, you knew that one. Amazing. <laughs> Great match. Okay. 17 to 16 to 14. This was a match, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, is all I can say. Jeremy, oh my goodness. This is what you want out of a number one contenders match. Yeah. This is what you wanted. We had three fantastic competitors give us three phenomenal performances. Yeah. How about we go talk to your future competitor right now, coming at you for that belt. Primetime himself, Paul Oyama. Paul, how are we feeling right now? You know, yeah, there's a good performance by these guys, but look at your clocks. It's still prime time. Even though you're pointing to no watch right now, I said you're just you're exactly. pointing to an empty wrist. <laughs> Always. Let's let's talk to Jeremy right now. Jeremy, you're going up against him right now, not just in a singles league, but now you're gonna go against him in a team. You guys yeah. are feeling fantastic right now. <laughs> All I can say is, uh, once I had a sick relative and I was dreading going to uh, talk to doctors while they're in the hospital. Once I had a car accident, um, another time. I uh, had a parking ticket. I had to go to traffic courts. Um, all of those things I probably dread less than this. But uh, what are you going to do? These, these are the breaks. I got to face Paulo Yama, and you better believe I'm going to do everything I can to prepare and be ready because we saw it. This guy is one of the all time greats. You know, it's somebody that does not go down easily, if at all, and certainly has yet to fail in this league. So. Uh, yeah, it's it's not it's not a uh, a great moment for me. But Paul, man, good luck. Is there anything you want to say to me? Because I'm sure you have a lot. <laughs> uh, not really. I mean, we'll we'll cross that bridge, I guess, when we get to it. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, I just want to shout out my two competitors. They showed up today. Um, I got absolutely railed in round two, and we're still here. I just want to take a personal thanks to Movie Forty Three um, for winning me this match. <laughs> The only time Morty, Movie 43 is going to get any sort of recognition. That's a first here. And probably anywhere. <laughs> now, now that we talked to her, let's talk to... I'm not even going to call you guys losers today. I'm, you guys are still winners. I'll say, let's talk to the guy who finished in second. Mr. Thomas Eanes. Thomas, man. I really thought you were going to get this five-pointer. I was... I, you, had, you were so close. You were so, so close. This really came down to a semantics. This came down to a one-point lead. But you know what? You're, you still played a fantastic game. How you feel right now? I appreciate that. Um, I mean, yeah, I feel all right. It's just couldn't pull out that damn doll. I hated Annabelle so much. The first one that, like, <laughs> I think I erased it from my memory. But, uh, yeah, hats off to, to Paul, man. Uh, definitely brought it. It's going to be an interesting uh, match between you and Jeremy. And uh, hats off to you, Jake. I think we'll see each other again near future I like the camaraderie amongst everybody right now this is a is, I love seeing this together right now and now let's go talk to the maestro himself maestro it just looks like the orchestra wasn't on your side today I mean that five point <laughs> yeah I know I know you were you weren't feeling 100 percent on that five point it was a little tricky yeah. in the end but again you still played a phenomenal game today you you really came and gave these guys a good run for their money how are you feeling right now yeah, I'm feeling I'm feeling fine that I uh, that I uh, that I'm in this uh, situation because it's just yeah I I I did not have a I was not on my uh, best day it was just my, my A game I I kind of I kind of stuffed up a little in the uh, first round and second round I just got way too confident with uh, new releases I, was like, hey, I know new releases but yeah that was just on me and then the third I, I'm a little iffy about that that five point I just. You wouldn't think from the uh, plot keywords that it's a uh, horror film starring a killer possessed doll, and you'd think Brad Dorf would be the the actor, but hey, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. I'll have to live with that. But I am uh, interested in seeing what uh, what Paul does against Jeremy. Both these guys are are insane, and uh, that's a uh, there's a good chance that we'll get a double champion out of that out of both those matches. So props to Paul for the win, and uh, Thomas, yeah. Um, I got your number, so I would love to play a one-on-one -on -one anytime, anyplace. I, uh, I, I do want to cut, cut in and uh, oh, remind. <laughs> uh, I want to remind Jake oh, yes. that you need to say something. So I do need to say something. I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh, yeah, so um, it's been a while since I've been in the team league because, uh, as everyone remember, I got uh, beat by uh, Charlie and his truth. 
But then something happened that could have been a, an awesome team, but unfortunately a situation happened that caused that team to, to no longer exist. And so with the help from the admins, I found a uh, teammate. The Alphas is back. We are still 2-1. and one. We are coming back. Uh, me and Joseph Olivas, who won one Ooh. of the uh, full medal trivia yeah, matches. Like full medal winner. Excellent. Yes, this his debut, is, I should mention. This is quite the development here. I, yeah. I very much look forward to seeing the return of the Alphas in the ring. Alphas 2.0, I mean, it, you guys could start wrecking some house again. So we'll yeah, so wait. we'll be back very soon, hopefully, and yeah, team, I'm coming back. All right, I love the optimism. I love the optimism from everybody here in this ring today. Jeremy, any final thoughts right now coming out of this match? Um, you know, it was a heavyweight match, as I suspected. Um, you know, round two had some surprises for me, but in the end, it kind of, you know, wasn't a big surprise how it went down. Although it was really close, which I knew it would be, because all three of these are awesome competitors. But yeah, you know, we're, we've got our, our, our belt match set up, and like I said, I'm going to be training, and, you know, things are just going to get more exciting and more awesome, and I'm just so proud of everything we're doing with this league. And, uh, and I think, you know, the trivia that gets played here is at the highest level of any league, in my opinion, and it's just, it's rad. So I'm just so glad to be a part of it as a player, uh, behind the scenes, everything that I do, and just, you know, thank you to these awesome players for making the league what it is, because if we didn't have you guys, we wouldn't have what we have. You couldn't have said it any better myself. I want to thank very much again to our competitors and to you guys, the viewers. We love you all. We love seeing you guys share the matches, be receptive to them, liking the videos, sharing the videos. Which brings us now to the end of our match. If you guys like what you see and want to keep seeing more of it, comment down below, like the video, subscribe, share, do whatever you got to do to spread the word about this channel. If you like what you, if you like this and want to get into this, we have worldwide movie trivia. We also have full metal trivia over with full, the full metal. Metal guys, Jeremy's one of our head guys over there. They're a lot of fun. We also have movie debating with movie battlegrounds. If you're into that as well, it's very much akin to movie fights. A lot of fun there. They do an excellent job there. Definitely stay tuned for that. So, on behalf of every our competitors here, everybody in the admin team, my co-host today, Jeremy the Adam Adams. This is Big Papa Jeff Varu saying thank you guys for joining in, and we'll see you guys next next time. And keep taking it.